Next up for the tail cone work is going to be doing some wiring. I need to get all my wiring put back down the tail cone before I get my top skins put on because I'm not really going to have access. Easy access at least. What I'm up against here is I got to get an uh, uh, antenna cable back here, which I bought some, here we go. I bought some RG400 cable and I'm gonna be making up my own cables just so I can make them the, you know, the right length that I want, not have any extra length coiled up. So uh, I'll be running some of this RG400 back there for that antenna. That's my uh, ADSB antenna. My transponder antenna is gonna go up a little further up uh, in the cabin area, under the cabin area. I'll run some RG400 back here. I need to run my elevator trim, multi-conductor cable back here. And then I'm doing a beacon on the tail, on the tip of the tail, the vertical. So I will be running a power cable for that as well. I need to get the, um, my ELT is gonna sit up under this aft baggage area here. I'm not sure where I'm gonna put the ELT antenna. I was thinking about putting it on the tail cone. I don't know, somewhere, maybe about right in here or here. Again, some thinking to do. At the very least, I know I gotta run the elevator trim, right? Like, that one I know I gotta run. This is the Dynon SV ADSB 472. Um, this needs to be mounted somewhere. I was thinking, where am I gonna mount the ADSB thing? Well, I'm not doing Garmin, and I don't need the AHARS mount, or the magnetometer mount, that is, for the Garmin. The magnetometer for the Dynon, I'm gonna stick in the wing up here somewhere. Uh, and that's mainly because on the Dynon, the magnetometer has a direct connection for the OAT probe. And I wanna put my OAT on the underside of the wing out here somewhere. And it's just easy to just run it right there next to the magnetometer, wire your magnetometer down in. Here's what I decided on. Why not take the magnetometer mount for the Garmin, uh, I'll place it enough to where when I put the nine pin connector here, I can take a nice sweeping turn down to this area here and run it forward. And same thing, the antenna can go there. So I'll probably split it right there in the middle. The holes are, were almost the same, but not quite. The, you can see the holes where the nut plates would go uh, if this was a Garmin. Bring it over here and we'll take a look at it. On the Garmin, the holes are here, 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 and here. And then these were the holes for the nut plates. It was so close, but it was off by like half a hole width on the width. So I just drilled new holes and I used these uh, panel nuts. We use these in our industrial systems. Let's see if I can grab one here, here we go. It's, it's like a press in nut. It's got little teeth on it, a little knurled surface there. And you just press it into a hole slightly smaller than that. So a little press in panel nut and it works great for stuff like this. Uh, in fact, you guys that are doing your Garmin stuff and wanting to get away from the nut plates, which are ferrous, um, these are stainless here, they're non-magnetic. You can get these in all sizes. These happen to be three millimeter. All of our stuff that we do for the industrial side of things is all in metric, but you can get them in, you know, 832 and you can just press them right in there and then use stainless steel screws or aluminum screws or whatever, I guess. Um, I don't know, just a thought for y'all because I've seen some, some of y'all talking about needing to change out the nut plates because they're steel. But anyways, that's what I'm gonna do. So I've already got this thing mounted to it and Oh, and what now these nut plate, or sorry, these uh, press in panel nuts are not, they don't have a locking feature. So you would need to use a little bit of Loctite, which is what I did here. I just put a little, little bit on the end of the threads and tighten it down and that is secure now. So that's where the ADSB is gonna live. go got it riveted into place there so now what I can do I had preliminarily run this antenna cable I ran it all the way up because I wasn't sure where I was gonna put this thing what I'll do is I'll end up having about a foot two three four five about a five about a six foot cable so I'll go ahead and trim this get to where I get a nice nice sweep to it Nothing too tight, and I'll uh, go ahead and cut it and terminate that end with another BNC and get that taken care of. And then I can go ahead and run the 
I can make up the harness here and run that wire or those wires forward up towards the panel. Well, I got that done. Got the cable run and uh, terminated at both ends. Here's what I got here. Nice little sweeping run here. And uh, BNCs do fit through these openings in the corners, if you're wondering. So you can terminate your cables and then run them after instead of having to try to terminate them in the airplane. Um, I'm using these little clips. They use uh, VHB tape on the bottom. They work really well. Just want to put a little alcohol or MEK acetone, whatever, on the aluminum and gets it good and clean and these stick amazingly well. And they're, they, they open up on one end, so you can just pop the cable in, it holds it in there. I just put one in the middle of each bay and then one here. And I temporarily held up this rudder cable with just a clamp up there and a clamp back here, just kind of holding it in place. I wanted to make sure that this cable wasn't gonna interfere and it's not. I've got about three inches of clearance with the way I've got it sitting. So this is where I've decided to put my ELT. I'm running the Artex ELT 345. It's a nice lightweight compact unit. Um, I'm gonna put it behind between station three and four under the aft baggage. Well, I got my doubler sheared up. It's gonna sit like so. I'm gonna take out, I'm gonna drill these three rivets out here. And when I rivet this in, I'm gonna use those three rivets that are the flange of this bulkhead here. And then um, I'll catch a few rivets through the doubler and the skin there. And basically what we'll end up with is something like, something like so. And of course I'll run some, a couple rivets for the doubler around here as well. Got everything drilled out and deburred, so this ELT mount or tray is ready to rivet into place. Uh, I'm going to use CCPQ uh, stainless rivets for this and go through the bottom skin, the doubler, and then this uh, stainless tray. ELT is mounted. That turned out quite nice. It's good and solid, and I'm happy with that. Well, I think I'm at the point where I'm comfortable with all my wiring down the tail cone uh, to, to get to a point where I think I can start doing these top skins here. Uh, I've got my wiring run back, I've got my elevator trim, I've got a power wire for my uh, beacon on the vertical fin, 
Also ran an extra uh, three conductor wire back there for whatever. Probably uh, might use it for a GoPro, powering a GoPro back here. Um, so I, I think it's safe to, to start doing this top skin stuff. And worst case scenario, if I gotta lay a board down there across the bulkheads and crawl in there and do something, I can. Um, but I don't think I'll need to. I, I, I think I've accounted for everything. So I guess that's gonna do it for that stage. And uh, I will start working on getting these top skins prepared. One of the things I'm gonna do is uh, bend the edge on the, the bottom edge on both sides. And then I will probably also bend the top edge on whatever side I decide is going to overlap the other. Um, so I guess I'll start working on those pieces now. Manual is saying to fabricate the window support according to this figure. So I'll get the stock out here. Looks like we're gonna modify it by cutting a little bit out and place a bend in it to match this angle here. piece cut to the 33 and a half dimension. Now they say match the angle on the fuselage and mark to leave a two and a half inch tang. And you remove that material there. Well, they don't tell you what the angle is, but I just took a digital protractor here, followed the bottom edge of the skin, and then center lined the holes for the rivets that go up on the support. And that gave me about 35 and a half degrees. Then I took my protractor here, set this to about 35 and a half. And what I'll do is I'll just, and I marked back my two and a half inches for the tang. What I'll end up doing is setting this up here, making a mark, and then I'll remove this material here. Here's what I get after marking. And I did hold it up here roughly to where it would go up to the gusset up there and down here. And that, that 35 and a half degree is pretty much dead on. I'll trim this out now, file it down, and then I will have to bend the tang to that 35 and a half degrees. Got my piece clamped down here to the work table. I think for this task, I'm gonna use my air saw. Probably gonna be the best way to get this cut cleanly. Pretty good cut. I just got a little bit of a lip here that I will uh, file down. Got this bent up. I just took the reciprocal on a half circle of the 33 and a half, and that gets me 144 and a half. And I just bent it to that. And if I bring it over just by eye, it definitely appears to, I mean, it's pretty much flat on there and I'm right there. So that's gonna work. You know, we don't know exactly where this is gonna go just yet, but I did come up here. And I know, of course, this is gonna fit on the inside here. I'm gonna to have to nip this corner off just a little bit. Uh, and also to clear some of the weld and stuff back there. Uh, so I'll trim that. And then based on other videos I've seen with other builders, they haven't riveted this yet because they wanna set this angle perfectly in line with the center of the holes on this skin. And the only way you're gonna do that is get these skins click out in place then start to fit these skins and see where that line lands you. And then you can do some adjustments, sliding it back and forth here, uh, and that will change your angle here. So I'll hold off on that, but at least this part's made. I'll duplicate this on the other side. One thing I did was I put a little, a little radius relief right in the junction of this bend where this leg of the extrusion comes in and joins the surface right where the bend is, because it really seems to me like that's a uh, that's going to be a high likelihood of an area that could develop a crack over time. And then once that cracks, that crack's just going to propagate across the material there. So just put a little 
a little relief cut in there, just filed that in, and then just polished this up, soften up all the edges with some Scotch-Brite. And uh, I'd, I'd probably recommend doing that if you're gonna be doing this stage of the build. It's not gonna hurt anything, and it should offer some benefits. This will wrap it up for this episode of Tail Cone. There is one more part, the last part for Tail Cone is coming up in a few days. Stay tuned.